Ceuta calls for resolving the crisis in Syria peacefully within the recognized rules of international law. Syrian armed forces restore security and stability to several areas and continue to target terrorist hideouts. And six Iraqi police officers are killed in a suicide attack against a police station to the north of Baghdad. television in Damascus. Russian Foreign Ministry said that Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov will continue discussing ways of resolving the crisis in Syria with his U.S. counterpart John Kerry and U.N. envoy to Syria Al-Akhbar Al-Ibrahimi on the sidelines of the United Nations General Assembly meeting in New York on the basis of what was agreed upon previously. The Ministry issued a statement in which it called for settling the crisis in the Middle East within the framework of the recognized rules of international law uh, with respecting the state's sovereignty and the territorial safety without foreign interference and through launching internal political dialogue, adding that this fully applies to the crisis in Syria. The Ministry said that Lavrov will hold a number of bilateral meetings and participate in other several meetings such as the BRICS Foreign Ministers meetings the International Quartet Meeting for the Mid Committee sorry, for the Middle East Affairs and the Sixth Major Powers Meeting on Iran's nuclear program. The statement added that the Russian delegation will continue to work actively with respect to the subject of priority for the Russian Federation and the issues on the General Assembly's agenda, which tackle combating the spread of the arming race and enhancing transparency and confidence measures in this field as well as guaranteeing the security of international media. Chairman of the Russian Duma's Foreign Affairs Committee, Alexei Poshkov, stressed that the wave of violence Iraq is witnessing is a direct result of the United States occupation, warning against a similar scenario in Syria. Russia Today website quoted Poshkov as posting on Twitter that U.S. President Barack Obama was against the war on Iraq, adding that Obama should clearly tell if he wants the Iraqi chaos in Syria. But he still remains silent. Israel is the real winner from the use of chemical weapons in Syria. This is a very logical fact and is being confirmed by the media outlets all over the world with evidence. The Independent is one of them. Robert Fisk, the Middle East correspondent of the Independent for more than 20 years now, wrote an article giving evidence from a journalist friend of his who accompanies the Syrian Arab army in its operations in the suburbs of Maddamiya in the western Damascus countryside. The journalist said that he was with the Syrian Arab army the night the chemical weapons were used, but saw no evidence of gas being used. What he does remember, however, is the concern of government troops when they saw the first images of gas victims on television, fearing that they themselves would have to fight amid the poisonous fumes. Frontline Syrian forces do carry gas masks, but none was seen wearing any, the journalist added. Fisk asked some questions that confirmed that the Syrian forces didn't use chemical weapons, such as, why use gas when so much more lethal weaponry is being flung at rebel forces across the country? If the government wanted to use gas, why not employ it in north of Aleppo? Why in Damascus? And why wasn't gas used on this scale in the previous two years? And why employ such a dreadful weapon when the end result is that Syria, by giving up its stocks of chemical weapons, has effectively lost one of its strategic defenses against an Israeli invasion? Finally, Fisk concludes that Israel is the real winner after all, and that it benefits not only from the chemical weapons use incident, but also from the bloody war in Syria. Units of the Syrian Arab Armed Forces destroyed weapons and ammo of terrorists in Hoptan and Jabal north of an Arab camp and east of Deir Hafer, killing and wounding a huge number of them in addition to destroying four vehicles along the road between Al-Bab and Deir Hafer, eliminating all the terrorists inside. 
Moreover, units of the armed forces destroyed three pads for launching missiles and mortars in al Jdeide, Quiris, and Rasmal Aboud villages, inflicting heavy losses among the terrorists operating them. In Aleppo, eastern countryside, units of armed forces confronted terrorists who were attempting to attack al Adnaniya village and killed scores of them. While also in Aleppo, southeastern countryside, armed forces destroyed gatherings of terrorists and units of the armed forces clashed with terrorists who tried to infiltrate to the old city of Aleppo, killing scores of them in Az-Zahrawi marketplace and near the Justice Palace. In Iraq, six of the Iraqi special police officers mar were martyred in a terrorist attack carried out by four suicide attackers against the police station to the north of the Iraqi capital, Baghdad. An Iraqi security source clarified that four terrorists attacked the police station near BG, town to the north of the capital, Baghdad, and shot fire at the station guards. The exchange of shooting resulted in the killing of one of the attackers as the other three blew themselves up. After the arrival of the army's enhancements and reinforcements to the place to attack, which led to the martyring of six Iraqi police officers. The source added that four terrorists were wearing the Rapid Deployment Forces uniform, which made the attack easier on them. Going to Turkey, where a police compound in the Turkish capital Ankara was struck by three rockets. Two buildings belonging to the National Police Directorate in the district of Dikman were hit, but no one was hurt, and the third fall fell into the grounds. Dikman is one of the places across Turkey where anti-government protests have flared up in recent months. Meanwhile, Erdogan's forces arrested 11 demonstrators in Istanbul after dispersing a protest that took to the streets denouncing Erdogan's policy at the internal, internal and external levels. Thousands of Bahrainis took to the streets to denounce oppressive measures and unprecedented security escalation exercised by al-Khalifa regime and the Bahraini people, against the Bahraini people and to demand the release of political prisoners. The demonstrators denounced the decision taken by al-Khalifa regime to close the Islamic Religious Council, asserting that such escalation will make the Bahrainis more determined in their demand for democracy, justice and equality. Moreover, masses worked, took part in the sit-in in al hurriya Square, west of the capital Al-Manama, that also witnessed mass night demos despite strict measures imposed by Al-Khalifa security authorities. With this, we come to the end of our news for today. More details on our website in English, www.serialonline.sy. Stay with us after the break, the latest in the world of economy and finance in our economic news.